A lot happening in April because of the transfer portal for both Illinois basketball and Illinois football. So let's chat about it. Let's go portaling. I'm Jeremy Warner, Alana Enquirer publisher. He is Joey Wagner, Alana Enquirer as well. And uh, we got a lot to talk about. Spring football, we got some things we want to update you on about what we're hearing a little bit about what we're seeing, I guess. Uh, and then we can uh, talk about the new transfer edition for Illinois football, Rashawn Wilkins, as well as uh, Illinois basketball and everything happening in the portal there. And that's what everyone wants to focus on, Joey, is Illinois basketball and everything going on in the transfer portal there. So let's talk about Brandon Murray goes to Georgetown. Not a huge surprise given he's following former LSU assistant Kevin Nickelberry there. But obviously one of the top targets, if not the top target for Illinois, 6'5", 210, really long, really athletic, pretty good shooter. They think he can get better as a shooter as well, uh, but average 10 points a game as a freshman. Would have been a huge addition for Illinois to add somebody that's a proven scorer in a backcourt that has no proven scores despite having a lot of young talent. And somebody that I think could have played on the court with Jade Neps and Sky Clark, right? And, and all those guys kind of put together. So uh, a tough miss for Illinois basketball, but not a surprise he's going to Georgetown. Yeah, I think I would have probably been more surprised if it was Illinois. We know Chester Frazier had those connections with him. Uh, but Georgetown, I mean, look, I, I know what Georgetown's record was last year. They weren't very good, but that's 21 the, straight losses. That's, that's tough. That's <laughs> tough stuff. But th I, I think there is a, hey, fresh slate we're still georgetown basketball you got the assistant coach close to home like there is a sell there i i think if you're a player so now illinois has got to pivot and that feels like what every school has to do in the transfer portal once twice three times in an off season is find a way to pivot have a list plan it out there's still options terrence shannon's out there courtney ramey's out there but they, they put some effort into getting brandon murray they had him on campus over the weekend uh i, I think there's another discussion to be had about the eval periods and with the transfer portal schedule changing, I think that you can make an argument to change the schedule if you're the NCAA, but that's a different point. So where do they go from here? What's the urgency? It's Tuesday after morning, I guess, Tuesday morning. We're talking to Brad tonight. So we'll ask him as much as we can, but just what's the urgency? What's the timeline here? And, and where do they go? And we know what they're looking for. We think we know what they're looking for in terms of a wing, maybe a veteran ball handler, but just how does this all shake out over the next few weeks? Well, and that that's it. There's what, 18 days uh, that people can enter the transfer portal and still be eligible for next year. So you can continue to see names going to the portal. And there are some interesting names that are even going in this morning. I think Illinois uh, could look into. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but uh, Brandon Murray was one of the top transfers in the portal. Maybe didn't, you know, most people didn't know his name before uh, all of this started. If you're an Illinois fan and didn't watch a lot of LSU but he's got the potential to be a, an NBA guy. He's got the potential to be a number one guy. And he's certainly going to be that at Georgetown. And I think that is the sell outside of Nickelberry is you're our guy and you get to put up the numbers. You get to be the guy of our offense. Uh, and he's certainly going to do that at, at Georgetown. So even though Tennessee, Illinois are far more proven, right? Um, I, I think from the start, a lot of people thought Georgetown uh, would be tough to beat because of that assistant connection. And, and now he gets to go be the guy there. So you mentioned a guy, Terrence Shannon, um, Chicago native, did great at Texas Tech, had some health issues at some times. Uh, Texas Tech has done a really good job of, of adding transfers themselves. So uh, a proven three and D guy. Now, can he be more than that? I'm not sure, but he's also one of the top transfers in the portal. Michigan has been involved there. A lot of schools across the country have been involved there, but it's been pretty quiet uh, around Terrence Shannon. Um, more of the guy who probably played the three uh, at, at Illinois, which uh, you wonder with, with RJ Melendez, how that, that all would work out. But he's certainly a talent that makes a lot of sense for what they need, Joey. Uh, I, I'm just wondering if those two teams feel like the fit is there, even though there is a, a history here. You know, Illinois recruited Terrence Shannon really hard uh, in high school after he went to IMG Academy and he ended up uh, going to DePaul first as a, as a commit and then signing with Texas Tech. He's certainly on paper makes a lot of sense but the health questions the fit questions that would be interesting to see yeah and I think just quickly when you when you're looking at who they're after in the portal you look for the connections right I mean that that's so much about all of this is who, who have they recruited in the past and remember this is a fresh mostly fresh outside of Jeff Illinois coaching staff so Chester has connections elsewhere Tim has connections elsewhere so that's what you want to look for you want to look there but with him yeah what what is the fit? Because I, I think you and I, Jeremy, are of the belief that like this is RJ Melendez and Coleman Hawkins' time. 
like this. And I think the coaching staff is, is on board with that too. So what does that look like? How do you navigate around that? And, and this is also the reality. And you're trying to win basketball games and you're trying to win basketball games deep into the season, deep into the postseason. Terrence Shannon helps you do that. So this is this portal is so much of a balancing act. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's fascinating, honestly, especially now that we're a year into this and we see who does what, how they do it. I mean, it's, it's endlessly fascinating just yeah. to watch it all play out. Well, and I think the other thing we got to think about is, is Jacob Grandison. We don't know. You're, you're going to ask tonight, Brad Underwood, is Jacob Grandison going to come back? Is that under consideration? Because if you have Jacob Grandison, RJ Melendez, I think you feel pretty good about that three position. Now Shannon's a far better defender than Jacob Grandison, but do you need to add that? Do you need to maybe focus on somebody who can handle the ball who can create his own shot? That's not really Terrence Shannon's game all that much, but certainly uh, he's a talent, but that's the other part of this. You can kind of do the, you know, Madden style uh, fantasy football, basketball, of this lineup's the most talented lineup, but it also has to, to work. And that's the other dynamic of all of this. And the only questions I have about Shannon, because you know, he's a really good player when he's on the court and healthy. Yeah, I mean, I think he missed some time this year with <laughs> with injury, but yeah, I, those are look. These transfer portal rankings aren't guessing and checking, right? Like, there, there's a lot of sound reasoning behind. There's a lot of transfer portal rankings out there. We have one. Everyone's got one. There's a reason he's up at the top. The dude can play basketball and can help you win games, and that's again what Illinois is after. But to your point, I it feels like we always have to like put the caveat like, hey, this isn't Madden. Like, this yeah. isn't sign it, you know, go get everybody who's a 90 overall and figure it out from there. Like there's real life here <laughs> and how you kind of work all this together. And Terrence Shannon's interesting fit there. And, and, but you do, you have to be involved. You have to talk, you have to figure it out because he's a really, really good basketball player. The guy who I think is like the most ideal fit right now is Courtney Ramey. That's, that's just my opinion, but I know Sky Clark's coming in. I know Jaden Epps are coming in and those guys can play right away. As long as Sky is, is fully healthy. Right. But I think those guys can play with a Courtney Ramey, a 6'3 guard who's ridiculously experienced, averaged 10 points over four years at uh, Texas, really good defender. That's one of my biggest concerns about the team next year is their on-ball defense. I think Courtney Ramey is really strong there, and he can make others better. He's an okay shooter, um, so shooting, you're probably not going to get a bunch from him, but he's a capable shooter. So I think he makes a lot of sense, but I think he makes a lot of sense for a lot of teams. So that one's going to be interesting to watch, Joey. But I I think having a veteran ball handler, just in case, what if Jaden Epps isn't completely ready to run a team? What if Sky Clark isn't completely healthy or completely ready to run a team? I think it makes so much sense to add a a veteran ball handler, defender, and a guy who can create his own shot like Courtney Ring. Yeah, I mean, let's also say the days Illinois is fighting for people who aren't really getting called from everybody around the country or over. I mean, they're, they're going for, for dudes here, but yeah. And, that, and that's no knock on sky Clark. That's no knock on Jaden Epps, but we've heard get old, stay old basically since Brad got off the plane and, and has been here. And, and that matters. And I think it matters a lot at the point guard spot when you have somebody who's got to run all of this and put it all together. And Illinois does a really good job of developing guards, finding guards with a lot of talent. They have those coming in. But, you know, you, you kind of – you had Io, and he went through all of that. And Andres Felice was a big part of that. You'll remember Jeremy to help yep. kind of put that all together a little bit. And then Andre Curbelo, I, I, I get everything, but we saw the flashes, right? And you, you just want somebody who can put it all together and make this thing work as seamlessly as possible. And that's probably a veteran right now, you think. I mean, obviously the guys aren't here on campus yet. Sky's not even signed to this point. <laughs> so it's not like we can ask Brad about that. But I think – that's something you have to consider because you did, you lost a lot of guard turnover. Things were pretty stable when Trent Frazier was playing point guard this year. And you, and obviously with IO, you want that, you want to build on that because how many times have you heard March is about guards Mm -hmm. and you you got good ones, but you probably want some of those who have been through the wars a little bit too. Yeah. And uh, you know, you, you can sit there as a lot of fans say we're we're good here, but you know, Brandon Podjimski, are you counting on him for 20 minutes next year? I, I don't see the staff being comfortable with that. And, you know, Sincere Harris, is, is he going to be your top backup guard? I, I don't see that. So I think they're going to definitely go and, and get somebody that can help, whether it's Courtney Ramey or not. Some other names, Gerard Lucas out of Oregon State. Feels like a really gettable kind of target. At Oregon State, averaged, what, 12, 13 points the last two years, which is a weird whirlwind they went through, making the Elite Eight a year ago and then going – three and 28 this year, but he was one of their only real positives 
can score. He's a six foot three, six foot four guard, certainly can score a good three point shooter, not as much inside the arc, um, but doesn't do a lot, much, a lot else. He feels like a taller version of Alfonso Plummer, which if that's what Illinois ends up with is, is still a solid piece to your puzzle. Maybe not a go-to piece like a Courtney Ramey or Terrence Shannon, or, um, you know, somebody like Brandon Murray, but Gerard Lucas could make some sense. Uh, Antonio Reeves at Illinois state just took a visit to Nebraska. Illinois doesn't seem as involved there, but those two guys seem similar in that you're definitely getting a score, which Illinois needs. I mean, they need proven scores. Um, but can you add somebody like that that maybe lower on the list in, in fans' minds but still could help you? Yeah, you have to. I mean, you don't want to call anybody they're going to get a glue guy, but you have to have somebody who binds this whole thing together. And I there are options out there. And, I, you know, I don't think missing on Brandon Murray, it stinks, right? If you're Illinois, like you want that guy, but it's not the end. The, the portal gives all the time, man. There's a lot of guys out there. And I think Illinois has a plan for what they're looking for. This isn't in so much when you're in the portal now is like just raw, like last year, it felt like raw talent acquisition. Like we got to replace Adam Miller. So let's go get somebody and, and Alfonso Plummer worked out. Now I, I think this is just a, you want to tie it all. Not, not to say they didn't want to tie it all together with Alfonso Plummer. Cause he came in with a very specific role in mind. And for the most part delivered on that role every game. But I, I just, especially when you, I, I think point guard, a veteran point guard is so important. And that's what I mean. Like you, need somebody who can bind it together who's done it before i just think you need some kind of proven guard sure. I, I mean brandon pajimski right now is your most experienced guard and he played 69 minutes last year nice. nice like he like that is your most experienced guard who's coming back unless you're unless jacob grandison comes back and you qualify him as a guard another name who just entered and i don't i don't know if i'm going to pronounce this name correctly this uh it hasn't been connected yet to illinois but he just entered the portal this morning naheem elaine uh or elaine something like that out of virginia tech average nine and a half points a game last year good size good three ball looks like a three and d guy but played at Virginia Tech, so of course Chester Frazier has a connection there. So not sure uh, if he's the guy, but it's kind of an example, Joey, of you know might not be in the portal now. The guy you add, there's still two and a half weeks to get in that portal and be eligible next year, and uh, Illinois will still be scouring that. I don't think they're desperate because of adding a guy like Sky Clark, but uh, and Naheem Alenia, if that's how you say his name, uh, he makes sense or somebody else who enters the portal. I, I did want to mention with Courtney Ramey, you know, Michigan has had talent coming in, right? But you add a guy like Devonte Jones and you see how oh, important absolutely. he is for the team late in the season or Mike Smith two years ago, what he meant. But um, you know, those kind of guys like might not be the go-to guy in a team, but Illinois just needs somebody, a veteran, I think, to kind of stabilize that backcourt. Yeah, that's a really good uh, parallel there, Jeremy, because we talked, especially with Mike Smith two years ago, it's like, oh, man. like, And he wasn't the highest-rated portal guy in the world, but he just – that's what I mean. He just gives exactly what you need, doesn't freak out when there are moments that it would freak out. And that's not to say that incoming freshmen will, but – you have to assume that to be a possibility with incoming freshmen because this is high-level stuff that Illinois is playing. They're not playing for Wednesday and Thursday in the Big Ten tournament anymore. Like, you got to, you know, have somebody who's kind of been through. That's a really good, really good parallel. And I'm with you. I think Courtney Ramey makes a ton of sense. Like, I just keep getting talked into this. And, you know, we'll see. He, he's got a lot of people calling his phone. And be interesting how that one shakes out. Yeah, so I think that's what you're kind of looking at with the portal. One more name we got to mention just because we've – focused on this guy a lot through the last couple of years, Bryce Hopkins, a uh, former star at Fenwick here in the uh, Chicagoland area in, in Oak Park. And uh, he's transferred from Kentucky after one season. A lot of Illini fans would say, see, we knew something like that would happen. Like going to Kentucky, it's really hard to play. But Bryce Hopkins is an interesting name. I just question the fit, right? He's, he's probably a four at the college level, maybe has some three ability in him, but – when you have Melendez, you have Hawkins, and everything seems to be that they're going to come back here, right? You have those two, and plus you got Ty Rogers coming in. I don't know if Hopkins is the perfect fit. Again, in a fantasy baseball or fantasy basketball league, I'd love to add somebody like Bryce Hopkins to my roster. But on this roster, does he fit? Does, does it work with what you have on there? And just doesn't scream a, a great fit or perfect fit, even though if you add them and you force competitions, it's, that's sometimes a good thing, sometimes it's not a good thing. Yeah, look, I mean, rotations don't really go beyond 
eight. Eight. I mean, you say ten. That the every coach that says that by March they're not doing it, right? Yeah, no, that's just like the greatest follow up we should always have is like come March. Like, what happened? I thought way back in November uh, it was our understanding there were going to be hockey subs. But yeah, but there isn't. A, there are exceptions to that, but most teams usually only go eight deep. And you, you saw those Final Four teams usually went six, if that. Yeah, it was. I mean, you really parse it down, which is again the. Uh, you, it's a balancing act here, but I'm with you. I, I, I'm Jeremy. I'm all in on, on Coleman, Har- Coleman Hawkins, RJ Melendez. And, you know, so again, how do you do that when you know you want to bring in talent, but you know that those guys have talent and, you, and you've seen it developing over the, you know, with Coleman the last two years. And, and, and Ty can play right away. Ty Rogers can play right away. No, oh, I, I, like I keep thinking, like, what's Fletch going to do with him? Because Fletch like remakes people for a living, and I'm like, I don't even know. I mean, it's it's, it's quite literally true. He remakes people for yeah, a living. Like, I don't really know how, how you remake Ty Rogers because he, like, we're sitting in the press box at Memorial Stadium, and if he, they're like, hey, Ty's going to play tight end and catch touchdowns, they're like, yeah, all right, yeah, so it kind of adds up to me. Edge rusher, edge rusher, edge rusher, tight end. We're it's the, <laughs> it's the Brett Beal on the coach team. You play tight end here, uh, but yeah. So th- to your point. Where is the fit there? And again, it's kind of our job to remind, like, it's not always just you know, talent acquisition and, and all of that. It, it is, but there, there are so many more uh, things to play there. But it, you got, again, you got to kick the tires because it's your job to put the best possible team you can have out there. And you got to ask around, you got to gauge interest. And that's just part of this thing. And it's a long process. Like, transfer portaling takes a, a long time in some instances and, and some not. And obviously with, with someone like Brandon Murray, you know, what you know, and mm-hmm. you put all your cards in, but you got to figure the rest of it out a little bit. I would say within the month, we should know what Illinois basketball's roster should look like, right? I mean, Kofi Coburn has a decision to make on April 24th, whether he's entering the draft or not. And if he enters the draft, he cannot come back to school. That, that's a rule. You can't uh, enter the draft three times and return to school. Uh, Jacob Grandison, we should know by then whether he decides to enter the draft or not, right? So um, we should know on those two guys within the next couple of weeks. And then you know, a lot of the guys who need to enter the portal they have to do it by May 1st if they want to be immediate eligible. Now, those recruitments could last uh, you know, a little while after that. Since, But within a month or so, we should know this. So it's, it's not going to be quite as long as last year took. So, but the next month could be a uh, pretty crazy here, Joey. It could. And I mean, it, I, I don't know if we'll know exactly what the, cause you can still get guys out of the portal. It may one's just like the doors close. Like you're, you can't get in. Well, you can get in the portal. You can't, can't get sit out of here. I mean, for all intents and purposes, the door's closed. No, but I don't think you're going to sit there on May 2nd. Like, you know, as a matter of fact, I, I think well, I'm going to. One Alec Bryant for Illinois football is an uh, exception, but yes, it's yes, the exception. Yes, good cause. <laughs> Again, as we sit here in the. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's not like for the sake of fans who I know worry about this for us, not going into like July feels like the greatest gift in the world yes. to deal with. Uh, but yeah, I think in terms of you'll have a really good idea and the big pieces that you want to know Kofi you'll have that answer and and really Jake I mean there's a reason Brad saying the praises of Jake and you saw his absence um over the last three games of the season that's uh that's got let's breathe a little bit guys it's almost over it's it's getting close to uh, I shouldn't say almost over you kidding me they're having fun with this man especially after adding a five star like Uh, they they can gripe about not landing Brandon Murray but there's Tennessee's griping about that too these are these are great problems to have and like I think for a lot of people this is fun this is like MLB free agency when I want my White Sox to sign somebody don't end up signing that person but you can dream everyone's got hope man a a little secret about what I do in my free time is I make Madden franchises with people and I just tear it down just to the studs I get like a trillion first round draft picks I send the first season and then it's like all right what can i do in the off season i feel like we're getting closer to that stage with fans I'm like okay yeah the games are cool that's all fun but what is the off season gonna look like when two weeks <laughs> before the ncaa tournament fans were on our board <laughs> talking about next year's starting lineup i was shaking my head but it's true like i get it because you're dreaming of what could be um but don't miss what's happening right in your fr- front of your face right like that was yeah. a pretty special season despite the end of it yeah and, and i get this is all fun and, and it's stressful at the same time for fans it's you know for every for the coaches i mean i, I don't know if the coaching staff is going to take a vacation like ever <laughs> i think brad tried last year that didn't happen i don't even know if you give it a shot this year but yeah it's i don't, sleep in may <laughs> oh no. doesn't some guy tweet that i'm not sure i don't follow <laughs> uh, but yeah man it's uh 
it, it's fun. I, I think just that the peace of mind after May 1st yeah. is going to help a lot because then it's like you don't worry about losing in so much as you just focus yeah. on adding. And I think that is the really like – that's the safety blanket if you're following all of this. Which is why they put that rule in place so that coaches might be able For to. For you and I <laughs> to be able to take some time on May 2nd. But, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about football. Football ads, they went portaling as well. They've added Rashawn Wilkins out of Vanderbilt. Uh, I, I got to ask Rashawn. I'm going to talk to him tonight. I, I think he's only got one year of eligibility left. He's uh, graduated from Vanderbilt. But uh, a defensive lineman, Joey, who played – 500 snaps for Vanderbilt was their third highest ranked defensive uh, player, according to the PFF grades, uh, from Chicago, graduated from Mount Carmel. And Brett's talked about that a lot, Brett Bielma, that is, about, hey, if guys want to come home and play for us, we are we are open ears. Uh, they've, they've hosted another defensive line transfer as well, Devin Drew. Not sure if they'd add two more defensive linemen after adding t Raw Edwards. But, man, they, they are focused on adding in the transfer portal – depth up front right they've added now zai chrysler and isaiah adams juco kids but still transfers that can are two of the top six offensive linemen on this team and then you had t Ra edwards and uh rashawn wilkins to this group it tells it tells me they're not very comfortable with what they had coming into the spring on the offensive and defensive lines but they also address that and add some depth with wilkins yeah i think you're seeing the offensive line stable out a little bit i think alex pilstrom i'll get to wilkins i, I think he lessens the burden of like oh my god we have to get a center because i think to his credit man he stepped into that role in spring ball a long way to go and that's not to rule that out but he helps there and we knew defensive line didn't have depth you can go i mean go look at the recruiting classes there's not a lot of guys there and you have the uh, we think they're two stars and keith randolph and johnny newton like you know like you thumbs up you know what you're getting out of those guys you're probably going to get a step forward out of those guys that you, you know that, but we've wondered, Jeremy, since the middle of last season, like what does nose guard look like moving forward? We think that's where Rashawn Wilkins will be. We think, I mean, obviously you're going to chat with him later, but that tells me what, what are you seeing? And, and T-Ra addressed that, we, you know, in some capacity. I think there's some versatility there, but it tells me what are you seeing out of Calvin Avery? What are you seeing out of Virtus Brown in spring practices? This isn't one of those where they reconvened after spring. It's like, you know what, we, we probably could. There's a roster crunch, and they did this in the middle of spring. That, to me, is pretty telling as to where they believe, and he's a one-year guy. This isn't – you know, T-Raw adds a little bit more because he has multi-years. One-year guy, I mean, that – sound the alarm. Like, that is what you're looking for and understanding what they think they have. And I'm not saying he's going to start, but I think that's a very telling point that they brought him in. I, I mean, he looks like a nose guard when you see when you yes. see what he, uh, Rashawn Wilkins. He looks like one, but uh, there's some questions even behind Keith and Johnny. And we've seen Keith is out for the spring. Now he's still going through some workouts, so I think they're being really cautious with him. But if you have an injury to to Randolph and uh, or Newton, you got some issues. Like Jamal Woods has been a solid player but is he exactly what they want at that position? So you add a little bit more depth and they've tried to be versatile with some of those defensive linemen. So we'll be interesting to see if they add another guy uh, at that position as well. You know, Seb McConnell's coming along, but he's just a red shirt freshman. And this staff, you know, on the line of scrimmage doesn't sound like it's going to count a lot on, on red shirt freshmen. So uh, I think it tells you when you add Chrysler, you add Adams, like these guys want to get better up front. And I told you this, Joey, when we were talking uh, after practice, it's like, those are two positions you have to be good at and deep at in the big 10, because you can't cover that up. Maybe you can cover up not having a receiver uh, or three good receivers. We've seen Wisconsin, Iowa do that for years, um, but covering up offense and defensive line, you can't do it. You, you have to be good there and you have to be able to account for injuries. And uh, they, they've seemingly prioritized that in the transfer portal more than say a wide receiver where we think they need help. Right. They are not very deep there, but um, it seems like they've prioritized the O-line, D-line more than that. For now, there's still – Yeah, they can still add. There's still a couple weeks here, and spring balls are wrapping up. I think the port – you're going to – there's going to be a wave still in the portal, I'm sure. I mean, it would make sense that Illinois is going to be affected by that. That's just how this thing uh, works a little bit. But Yeah, and they could still add a center. Like, they're they're still looking at that despite uh, Pilstrom, you know, stepping up this spring. Um, He's certainly made them feel better. But they could still look at one, and they, they offered Dylan Davis uh, out of Furman who could potentially play in the interior. Yeah, and I, I think you also have to look at 
we know what the scholar there's not a lot of spots on the initials left i think you know we, we projected two I, I think two or three so you're going to get into blue shirts they've already got two which means you're cutting into the next class so anybody they're taking isn't just oh yeah it's yeah we could this is like all right we don't have a lot of spots this has to count and i think that's what you learn is when you see who they're going out and offering you see what this is this isn't yeah, we could do this. We think this could help us. Okay, we need somebody to come in here and be an impact here sooner rather than later. And that's what you've seen on the defensive line. We've seen some cornerback offers go out there. I'm with you, Jeremy. I think wide receiver is a place there. You've seen that on offensive line. I, I just think that what you're seeing now with some of these offers, who they're bringing in, shows a little bit of the urgency just mm -hmm. because of the space and the, and the roster crunch a little bit. All right, so we've been able to kind of – talk more about spring ball with the Illini staff more than they actually see. We see some position drills. Like today, we got to see the offensive guys do defensive drills in case there was a turnover. So they were tackling uh, stuff like that. The defenders to learn how to block. Um, so they don't show us a lot, Joey, but we are going to see more. Uh, you're going to see more on Saturday with the practice. Uh, they're going to open for about an hour. So maybe we'll learn more there, but you're starting to figure out who's going to be a factor where. And Quarterback, it's going to be Tommy DeVito and Arthur Sikowski, right? And Ryan Johnson is the number three. We know Chase Brown and Josh McCray are going to be the top running backs, and maybe Chase Hayden can go in there, and and then maybe Aiden Lawfrey, uh, a true freshman, can be an impact player. Wide receiver, they're really thin. Uh, Casey Washington and Isaiah Williams have been nicked up, so they've been limited, though they're still going through – through workouts. So guys like Pat Bryant, we're hearing more about Sean Miller, a, red, uh, a true freshman early enrollee. Those are potential guys. Uh, and then on the offensive line, I think we know what the top six are. Uh, Alex Palczewski is still playing at, at tackle. Uh, he's moving better there, Bart Miller said. Uh, Isaiah Adams is, is further along than Zy Chrysler, but those two guys are competing for playing time. Jordan Slaughter, healthy, looks pretty good, uh, and is continuing to build off of a, you know, a strong offseason after the injury uh, he had last year. Uh, and then a guy like Alex Postrom stepping up at center, and then Julian Pearl working his way back from – his uh, final basketball injury he may ever have <laughs> while he's a college student <laughs> because you break your hand. Um, Brett Bielma and Bart Miller are not going to be too happy about it. But I think we're starting to realize who the impact players are, and that's kind of a rundown of the offense. What, what do you think offensively? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I, the, the six, we'll see. Like, it's how does it shake out? And, and I know we'll get to this defensively, but Palczewski helps a lot, and Isaiah Adams help a lot in their ability to play guard and play tackle. That just – it helps with the puzzle pieces. I just don't think there was as much versatility on the line last year as there is this small year. in the interior. No, you probably you trade a talent and experience you know, in the case, really experience definitely in the case of Lowe and Kramer and and really even Bedovinak and and Jarosati and and you know we think the world of Bedarian Lowe and Doug Kramer. So you have the talent there, you know, but the versatility I think is something we're going to see moving forward with this coaching staff, and, and I think that helps so much as they shuffle this out and yeah I think you look at guys like Sean Miller as a wide receiver and Pat Bryan and I, I still think there's you got to identify the portal here moving forward but those are guys that I think you're going to see because not a lot you know a lot going on out there and, and Brian Hightower we saw him running and catching things today we'll say I, mean, I I don't mean to to dumb it down to that point but we haven't seen much else and I'm interesting interested to see what he does in the spring game, but I, I think quarterback, Jeremy, we've covered at length. It's it's a two-person race, I think, right now, and one of the guys isn't throwing, so right. I mean, or isn't throwing with team, I should say. That would be Sikowski. That would be Sikowski. <laughs> Running back, don't worry about it. It's, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, <laughs> here, here's my thing. I think the running game, I'm not worried about it. I, I think the running game is going to be really good. I think Chase Brown as an NFL running back, he's going to be one of the best running backs in the Big Ten again. Josh McCray should only be better. Um, you know, Chase Hayden. Reggie, by the way, right? Josh McCray, like, he was big last year. And you see him this year, it's like, what? Yeah, and a good huge. Not, yes, like, not like yeah. a bad huge. Yes. Um, yeah, and then you just have so much depth there. Now Aiden Lawfrey can kind of go into that Jakari Norwood role, right? That kind of a change of pace back that you can line up everywhere. Uh, so I feel good about that. And I, I feel like you're going to be able to run block. You, you're still a big physical group. Now, I think the, the offensive line could have some issues early on. They might have to figure out, all right, is this guy best here? Is, is Chrysler and Adams, are, are they really ready? But I, I think you'll be fine uh, in the run game. 
I'm still really concerned about the passing game. Um, do you have enough talent there? Like, what is Tommy DeVito? How good is he? The wide receivers, um, you know, there's some talent issues there. And then Daniel Barker, you lost. I, listen, Luke Ford and Tip Ryman, really good blockers. I think they can be good pass catchers, but Daniel Barker was better than that. And I think Daniel Barker will be better than them this year now at Michigan State as a receiver. So that's where Barry Lunny comes in. And I, I think Barry Lunny is going to put these guys in better positions to succeed. Now, how much can he get out of them? I don't think you're going to see many seven-step drops. I think you're going to see a lot of quick hitters. I think you're going to see Isaiah Williams get a lot of catches in the screen game. Uh, I think you're just going to see a lot more of that kind of play design. And I think that should help them. I think you're going to see some quarterback run, some, some pitches, things like that. But how much does he have to work with is, is my main question. How much can they – he said it easily. How much can we throw and catch? I, as simple as it, as it gets, Illinois has not been good at throwing and catching for a really long time. No, and it's going to be a problem until it isn't. And that starts with the quarterback and getting somebody who's a long-term quarterback in here. That's not Tommy DeVito. I mean, it's just it can't be. He's got one year. Uh, so you, a tight end position, you look at an Owen Anderson. Um, he is an older freshman. He, he went to the prep school, yeah, the Hunt School. So he's you've got a little barker to him in terms of his ability to to stretch the field and catch and make plays like that but quick hitters is is every it's what we wanted to see for isaiah i don't know what the over under is going to be on catches for isaiah williams probably take the over i, I don't even know what it's going to be i said it at 68 and a half oh what do you have last year 40 something 30 something take it because i think they're going to there's an area in those screen games and those close to the line of scrimmage where you let a guy who can make everybody miss go out there and make people miss like whatever it's going to be take it with him. Because I think, you know, we talked about eight to 10 touches. I think he's actually going to get that this year. Like he should have gotten that last year. I think he will get that this year. What a world. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> <laughs> with, Rocket science. With Aiden Lawfrey, let's, and Jeremy, I've actually made this point with you go back in 2018 before Reggie Corbin ran for a million yards they used him in a lot of different – remember how they used him in uh, fall camp was, you know, you jet sweeps and, and you line him up in the slot and you move him around because he did make people miss and he did have speed. That's a way that I could see them incorporating Aiden Lawfrey into a room that is yeah. loaded with really good running backs. And you're not going to make him the bell cow because a you have two of them. Game. Yeah. yeah, just try to hit a couple home runs with it. In the same way we talk about Williams, get some screen, get the dude in space. He can move and, and he's – He's a good enough size, too. It's kind of like Deuce Span. It's kind of this weapon. Should have used him a little bit more, too. <laughs> get, him, get him the ball in space. Throw it him a couple of times. Uh, all right, defense. We talked about the defensive line. Feel great about Newton and, and Randolph, despite Randolph uh, being out with an injury right now. Uh, that nose guard position is concerned. But let's go to the outside linebacker room, where you lose two hugely productive players last year in Isaiah Gay and Owen Carney. But dare I say, they're going to be more talented and deeper. Uh, at that position, it's very inexperienced, though, right? They feel great about Seth Coleman. They, they think Seth Coleman, who showed as much flash as of any outside linebacker in small samples. He started over Isaiah Gay. Right. Uh, yeah. he, he had some really big plays that was like, whoa, that, that guy can be next-level talent. So he is, is ready to take that next step, it sounds like. And then at the other position, it sounds like it's going to be Alec Bryant uh, or Ezekiel Holmes in the mix. Ezekiel Holmes – um, the, the guy who's been here has been in the system for a year. Now Brian has too. He's been in the system since the fall, but hasn't been on the field. Ezekiel Holmes has played a little bit, but Alec Bryant, certainly the talent, right? Four star, former Virginia tech player. Uh, but they feel good about how strong those guys are and it can be really good against the run, but also add some athleticism as an edge rusher. Yeah. I want to push back on the more talented, not because I don't think it's a possibility. I need to see it. I, I need yeah, to see well, that manifest on the field. Raw talent compared to sure. production, right? Like right. Owen Carney was very productive. Uh, Isaiah Gay had a stretch towards the end of the season that was ridiculously productive. But I think, I mean, based on talking to Kevin Kane, they think this group's potential is great, but potential is different than production. Right. And, and I think depth far and away is improved um, with, with these guys. And what did Owen Carney play 96% of oh, snaps a, or something like that last year? They, they knew it was an issue, but they go, we can't take this guy out the field. Well, yeah. What do you do? I mean, <laughs> so now you have another year of DJ Johnson in the system. You, we talked to Jared Beatty today. He looks really good. Now he's, 
sounds like he's limited. I, I don't expect to see much on the field from him in spring ball, which you don't like to see. I, I don't really worry about that with any of the veterans. You know, if Luke Ford's missing time, Palcho, man, they've done this. You, you yeah. want to see the freshmen get out there a little. That's kind of why they're here. They said knee injury with him, and he's not having surgery or anything like that. So, like, it seems like it's a short-term thing, but it's held him out for some meaningful reps. Yeah, the only thing with injuries you would look for in the spring is tears, breaks. Yeah. I mean – Otherwise, missing spring practices stinks, especially for a guy who's enrolled early. But I, I don't get too worked up about the green jerseys right now. There's, there's still a long way to go here. But, yeah, and then you still have Gabe Ackes to bring in, who is physically freaking impressive right, for a freshman. And, and, again, I think that's a position it's hard to be a true freshman. We saw DJ Johnson have some up and down moments. It's, it's just hard. I mean, you're in the trenches in the Big Ten, dude. It's not, it's not a fun place to be if you're 18 years old. Go ask Alex Palczewski about it. It's, it takes a lot. So I think, you know, the fact that you don't have to rely on those guys, but you are getting to where you want to be out of this position group. And I think what Kevin's looking for, I know you talked to him, and what Brett's looking for has evolved a little bit. And, and that's part of building this thing is you want to build it. But the depth there is really, on paper, encouraging. And we all know, Jeremy, by the time October rolls around, depth is never as good as you thought it was in March or April. But they're... I think just having options beyond really three guys, as I think is about all you felt comfortable with last year, having just more feeling about yeah. four, five, and six should help out a little bit that spot. Well, let's be honest. It's the difference of a lot of good programs and not very good programs in the Big Ten is depth, and it goes right into the conversation about the inside linebackers, right? Because C.J. Hart and Tariq Barnes, if they're healthy, you feel like they could be really good. I mean, Tariq Barnes had one of the more – underratedly good years last year switching positions the mic and the will and played them both really really well through all those injuries so I, I think he's going to be really good maybe a guy we don't talk about enough um but uh, cj hart we saw the three quarters he was really really good against nebraska he's been full go so that's a good sign but talk with andy boo the guys who are stepping up behind him are isaac dark angelo uh, a former walk-on was on scholarship last year got some reps last year and then two redshirt freshmen Kanena Odaluga who looks the part and then Dylan Rosiak who they say is, is made a lot of plays um, from East Lake High School same as Jake Hansen best friends with Jake Hansen's younger brother Lane who was a long snapper at Illinois so those are those are some guys to watch but the concern is is health right the concern is depth uh, but you have a lot of young depth Malachi Hood's in that room you're gonna bring in Antoine Hayden in a in a year you feel good about what Andy Boo's building there. It's just there's not a lot of experience behind those top two options. How dare you forget James Cruz? And James Cruz. How dare you? But, yeah, it, it opposite of last year, right? Last year it was, okay, you've got Jake Hansen, Tariq Barnes, C.J. Hart, uh, Kalon Tolson. You had to rely on every one of those guys last year, and now you're, you're kind of holding on a little bit. And I, I don't know that that's a position you go for in the portal. I think you try to write it out unless an option like C.J. Hart hits you in the face and it just makes all the sense in the world, but you don't have the most attractive sell to somebody who wants to come in for playing time right now, because you have two really good players starting in those spots. So how does, I think you just got to kind of work with it a little bit here and, and, and figure it out. And hopefully it doesn't get down to that point, but you, you are starting to hear them feel a little more comfortable about those guys that you mentioned, Isaac, Dark Angelo, um, Kenan Odaluga. That so be interesting with, with how that, plays out but there's not as much depth as last year yeah all right uh, in the secondary i talked with aaron henry today um they seem excited about the talent that is in that room now they have to replace two really important pieces uh, of that room kirby joseph who's probably gonna be a top 100 pick in the nfl draft uh, as well as tony adams who had so much experience and, and had a pretty good year last year devin witherspoon they're excited about uh, aaron henry said he's as confident as anybody talks more trash than anybody and it's starting to take a leadership role there is a lot of buzz about Sidney Brown and how good mm -hmm. he's been. Like he, he had his best year as an Illini last year, even though what is a sophomore, he got all big 10 because he had some, some picks. He was great last year in that in the box role. They think he can be, have a really special season. Then you're hearing Taz Nicholson. Seems like he's kind of solidifying himself as that top option is, is the second cornerback after playing and struggling last year. And then Joey comes down to, is Quan Martin going to play nickel or is Quan Martin going to be free safety? I don't think they're going to tell us that um, <laughs> this offseason, even though Aaron told me today Quan has been great at nickel. Um, you could see him play both. 
but it's probably going to come down to is Keontae Curry, uh, you know, the best five uh, at that nickel spot or is Prince green that best uh, next starter as a free safety. And, and they mentioned Kendall Smith in that conversation as well. It's a lot of the same conversations we had about the offensive line is I think, you know, the pieces, you just have to get it all sorted out. And, and Sidney Brown, we talk about him a lot, little Tariq Barnes in the sense of like, maybe aren't talking about him enough because he was freaking awesome. I this mean, it's not new, right? This is fifth right. years of start. Yeah. Right? Kirby got all the attention last year, rightfully. So he played his butt off and he was like this, where, where have you been <laughs> story? Sydney. I mean, I, I just have flashbacks to that Minnesota game where he was just making life a terrible nightmare for that Minnesota offense. He was, he was, awesome. Malu. he was the Illinois Paolo Malu last year. Yeah. Say what you want to say. <laughs> I know Illinois fans struggle with PJ Fleck. And that dude's standing up somewhere and saying this is Troy Palomalu and not sure that he's got the best hair in Champaign-Urbana. <laughs> like, you listen to that because he was oh, awesome. Because Chase cut his hair off for I don't know what reason. <laughs> this is, oh, no. Like, come on. Like, I'm sitting here, this guy, and he cuts his hair off. And it doesn't make any sense. Joe. No, well, I, hey, teach their own, man. I, there's still some good all hair. Anyway, <laughs> we, I, yeah, I think how do, where did Quan Martin plays is similar to me. It's how you look at Palcher. It's, what does Prince Green look like? What does Keontae Curry look like? Which one of those two, in my mind, we could be not right on this, but I think we're pretty close. Which one of those two steps up and allows Quan to play in that other spot between free safety and nickel where he was really, really good at nickel, man. He was awesome. So, but having a guy like Quan, you can breathe a little easier. And I know he wasn't the superstar of the defense last year. He wasn't all Big Ten this or that. But that versatility, you can play in a defense that loves versatility mm -hmm. and can help kind of usher in some of those younger guys because of his ability to play elsewhere. Dude, you cannot overlook that. That is so important as you kind of kind – of, I don't want to say reset because you, you did lose a lot of guys but you bring some back. But as you start to turn the page into this next era of uh, – God willing, a better era of Illinois football defense. Yeah. And Ryan Walters seems excited about his group as well. And they have something really positive to build on, which I think you're counting on uh, because offense, I don't know if you're counting on your offense to be a top half big 10 offense. You just need them to be better. Right? 25 plus points a game would be a huge improvement uh, for, for this team. All right. For Joey Wagner, I think that wraps it up, right? Special teams, I think, think Caleb, Caleb Griffin, Griffin and Hugh Robertson, long snapper, Aiden Hall. I think it's the guy for the, the deep cut long snapper uh, <laughs> interest. I, I think he's the guy. Yeah, I mean, he was going to get pushed by Josh Leff coming in, uh, kid a decade younger than him. And then uh, Will McManus is, is competing right now for that kicker job, which is good. I think Caleb Griffin to be pushed, but it feels like Caleb Griffin's time. I think that wraps up for special teams. We haven't seen him kick yet. Yeah, I don't know who's going to return either for uh, even the little bit of returning that still exists in college football. I don't know who's going to stand back there and wave their arm and fair catch it. I have no idea. Punt return is more important than kick return because punt return is you got to catch the dang ball. Hot take. Who? 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 Uh, I think Donnie Navarro was really good at just catching the ball, right? So that's kind of a loss there. Northwestern's huge gain. A punt return. Catch the ball. Caleb Griffin. Oh, Kate. I mean, Caleb can do it. I just think Brett wants an actual threat back there. <laughs> I mean, Caleb, Caleb is a hell of a better athlete than I am. Not saying anything, but if, oh no, if your kicker's returning punts, let's, let's Isaiah. Let's, I mean, do you want to put Isaiah back there Aiden. and risk injury? Aiden, it's a tough spot for a freshman. Aiden, right. I like him probably as a kick returner more than a punt returner. Sean Miller, Sean Miller, would be that. I just want somebody to catch the ball because how many times do you actually return punts given the rule that you can run you down? Who is really good at it and it sucks at his career. I and love that we're going this deep. I know. I don't even know. I'm sitting here like I got so much to do, but Jordan Holmes was awesome great. as a punt returner. It sucks that his well, his one game wasn't great. But... Yeah, but it sucks that he, I mean I think he's towards ACL, if I'm not mistaken. He ended up at Eastern, but dude, he was really a nice punt returner. I don't know, man. It's <laughs> Let's see who they We're, trot out there to wait to the fans and start catching in, in a week and a half. We can worry about that in August. All right, for Joey Wagner, I'm Jeremy Warner. Thank you for listening to the Illini Inquirer podcast. Give us a rating, a review wherever you get your podcast. Give us a follow as well. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, follow us, like us, subscribe to us there as well. And don't forget, we'll have plenty of basketball, football content coming up for you uh, at the VIP side of things. So uh, only $1 for your first month of VIP membership. Uh, give us a try there as well. 
Uh, until next time, everybody take care of each other. Have a great day. And we will chat to you next time on the Online Enquirer podcast.